Well, hey you guys, welcome back for another garden tour. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Jennifer Bevins. I am a landscape designer in Vero Beach, Florida. But today we're in for a treat. Today we're gonna walk through my friend James's backyard. We're in Stewart, Florida, and I cannot wait to show you how this project turned out. We finished it a couple weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of things going on. We've got three water features back here. It's nestled in with um, you know, tropical plants and palm trees and just some, some of the favorite things that I cannot wait to kind of go into. Uh, but before we do, I kind of want to do this a little bit different. I, um, you know, I want to give you a little bit of background of, you know, how we ended up here on this project. You know, some of the struggles that we went through. Maybe some tips on just, you know, kind of, you know, some questions to ask yourself if you're planning on doing a project um, in your own yard. So, but for those of you who kind of want me just to get on with the tour, I'll stick the timestamp down below and um, you guys can move right into that. But for those of you who might be getting ready to tackle a project in your own yard, you know, these might be some things that you know you might want to ask yourself a little bit before um, before you get started you know some things that you know it, it, they don't always go according to plan projects do so even for us professionals I've been doing this for 25 years and you know there's always a surprise here and there so so I thought I'd share it with you kind of pull back the curtain a little bit so on James's project um, we had some initial issues so we had some structures in place that just just needed to go and you know that happens so often on different projects that we're on you know I, I can meet with a client and they've got a, a shed that needs to go or a giant oak tree that you know is just really causing a bunch of maintenance and a bunch of headache that needs to go and it's kind of hard to determine if you're really if it's if it's really a, a good idea tackling that and taking it out of the budget by just getting things back down to ground zero but in James's case it was a giant koi pond um, he had a good size concrete koi pond that was no joke getting this thing out of here um, the, the, <laughs> they did a phenomenal job installing it unfortunately the filtration system was just not you know just not up to par and he was constantly working in it so um, so the choice was you know keep it and try to work with it in the space or, or or take it out and considering that we're not dealing with a really big area especially if you're in Florida you know yards you know every square foot is prime real estate we ended up taking it out so my guys pulled that out and pretty much by hand you know just really it was an aggressive project but we got that thing out of there and it was the first time we'd ever done anything like this so I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go but we got that out of there gave us enough room to do the under um, storage water storage for the new water feature and uh, just needed to go um, the second thing he had in there was um, a giant oak tree that just pretty much towered over top of his entire uh, you know pool pool screen and his back patio and you know kind of gave some blockage to the water view too so but between the two you know he was just doing so much maintenance trying to keep the the leaf debris from falling the branches the acorns it just kind of kept that place um, the backyard kind of messy so you know if you have that going on in your space and you're trying to decide whether just to, to take that tree out or, or incorporate it into the landscape sometimes you can do you know sometimes you can keep it and sometimes it's just better to get rid of that because if you don't love it now you're really not going to love it after we dress up all the way around it so you're just going to get the best end result if you end up taking that out now before you know we get into the process of getting all the installation done and then calling us later and saying you know what you know that tree or that greenhouse or that shed or, or that pond or whatever it is in that space let's take it out now now it's more time money and expense of just trying to get that that out of there well money and expense are the same thing but you get you get what I'm saying so you know so even if it takes your first phase of your budget you know getting getting you down to a blank slate getting you down to new construction instead of working with some of the things that you might have in your yard that are going to cause you problems later get rid of it if you're doing it yourself um, and it's going to take you three weekends to do it just kind of pull all of that out there get down to a clean slate and then then you can really bring in everything that you want to bring in and just enjoy that that space I just always tell my clients do it right the first time um, and that way you know that way we're not coming back later and and trying to tackle that then but so and then I would say um, tip number two is um, you know figure out what figure out how the space is going to be used you know just generally is this is this going to be a spot that um, if it's your backyard is it a spot that you guys are going to gravitate towards when you have friends and family over are you trying to create that backyard resort type of feel or are you are you trying to you know 
you know, are you just trying to create a, a very low maintenance space for yourself and a, a, just a presentable front yard? I mean, just figure out what, what your goals are behind the space. You know, if you're anything like me, and you guys have probably seen my yard, you know, I want a resort type of planting. I want to feel like, you know, when I walk into my backyard space, you know, I, I feel like I'm staying at a five-star hotel. And, you know, I try to do that with the inside too. You know, I just want ultimate comfort when I'm home. I want to feel like I never have to leave to enjoy my weekend. So, I, you know, when I'm dealing and talking with my clients, I'm trying to understand, you know, what is it they're looking for in their, in their space? What is it we're trying to create? It's not just about plopping in a bunch of plants and trees and rows of this and rows of that. You know, we're, we're hoping to create an atmosphere. You know, what's the environment? What, what are we trying to do? That's the kind of thing that fills my cup with doing this after so many years is, is really creating a lifestyle for, um, for you to live at home. So, you know, think about, think about what you're hoping to gain from this space, you know? Um, is it, is it the, the dinner area that you're entertaining? Is it the area that you want your kids when they come home from college, everybody is in the backyard? Do you need to leave a volleyball net up and, you know, work around it? What, you know, what is, what is it that you're gonna do with that space so that way you maximize it? So, um, yeah, so those are, those are a couple things that just definitely think about before you contact a landscaper or a landscape designer or before you start tackling it yourself. And then, have a good idea, but I would say the third thing is definitely don't limit yourself. Don't, don't limit it to what your initial plan was because in James's situation, it evolved. It was, it was a process. So, you know, we started out with one concept and one idea, and then the more we got in the middle of it, the more, um, the more we, he, was, he was so open to giving me carte blanche on doing this whole project that he just pretty much just said just let your imagination go wild and and I know I don't have a big space to work with so just make it have some impact um, so in James's case this area um, pretty much is open to his entire back of his house his kitchen window looks to this space his um, living room doors open to this space and as soon as you want as soon as you walk through the front door this is what you see you see that backyard water feature so um, you know let it let it evolve let it you know let it turn into what it's meant to turn into and don't just stick to a set plan um, so but I'd like to give a shout out to my amazing crew um, because all of the challenges that we had to deal with in this project um, they they're the bomb they did it like like champs man um, so Bernabe Rodrigo Martin Chuck you guys, um, you guys did a great job on this project, and you do this week after week after week, and you know you, you start strong and you finish strong, and um, you know we're we're dealing with you know tough environments for the most part. You know it's hot, it's humid, it's half the time it's raining, and then you know so they're they're really having to pay a lot of attention to detail, and they leave things just as pristine. Just know that they care and they put a lot of attention into what they do, and after all these years together, I just want to thank them because they. You know they make this job worth it you know they they allow me to create these great designs and dream with my clients of, of what we're going to do with the space and they help me come in here and they they do all of the tough stuff they do all of making it all happen and um and they do it with such care so you know you guys you're the a-team thank you very much i'm going to show you exactly what they had to do and how they had to get this all this material out it went through a three and a half foot pathway everything that you're going to see in just a moment all came through this tiny tiny space so this was all done by hand the demo the removal the cleanup the concrete the giant trees that came out of this space all went out that way and all the stuff that you're going to see came in this way and almost all of it was done by hand the boulders were set with a small bobcat but everything else it was done by hand and you guys are the dream team so thank you thank you thank you because you make this job just such a pleasure to do so so without further ado I will um, start the tour. Um, if there's anything that I miss plant tree wise or anything that you see that I didn't cover, stick it in the comments down below with a timestamp um, there. Um, that way I can you know, tell you what that planter tree is. So I'm thinking about doing an FAQ video. So if you guys have any questions of you know, how to, you know, how the design process works or you know, certain plants or trees or how to deal with weeds or you know, whatever that might be, you know, um, just stick that in the comments as well, and I'll screenshot it and maybe address it in that in that uh, that question and answer video. So, but so I've kept you waiting long enough, and I'm assuming that you guys hear the water. So we are going to start walking towards the backyard and uh, share with you this beautiful, beautiful garden. 
so come on with me. So as you guys can see, James is on the river here. We have a gorgeous backdrop of a water view. And I know that um, obviously there's a lot of pros and cons with being on the water. The pro being is, well, you're on the water. But the cons being, you don't wanna cover anything in this space. But when you're trying to bring in a water feature that's significant in size that you can see it from inside the house, you need to bring scale with that. So I had a hard time uh, placing trees um, to where it didn't cover up anything substantial like, you know, big open lines and view lines to the water, um, but still gave us some scale and some impact to really anchor this feature in. So it was a little bit of a trial and it's not like my typical landscape where I really like to layer things upon layer. So, um, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a challenge, but I, I think it came out beautifully. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. So um, starting with here, you're going to see as a backdrop around the water feature itself is going to be foxtail palms. I chose to use foxtail palms at all of the entryways. So we've got a foxtail palm here to my right, and then we've got one to the left, and then we've made a crushed granite. This is Tahitian crushed granite. You guys, I love this rock here. This rock is absolutely great to work with. It compacts really good. It shows off any color of flagstones or stepping stones. It stays in place for a small rock doesn't roll like your typical round rock it's it's the way to go if you like if you like walkways or natural walkways so the two foxtails are flanking the walkways and then you come right up here so James's back patio here really does just offer a great place to really enjoy this backyard space the backdrop of the water and then now the movement of the waterfall features back here Oh, can you just hear that sound? It's just so much deep water sound. There's so many different levels of water from the soft splashing water of the spillway bowls to the deeper sound of the water hitting water in the, um, in the pond base. So, so this is um, what we call a pondless waterfall. There is a reservoir at the very bottom that holds about 300 gallons of water. And um, it, you know, normally with a pondless waterfall, it is exactly what you think it is. It's pondless, so there's not much water. But because James came from having a uh, koi pond, it was, um, it was important for him to see water. You know, he wanted to see the actual water sitting down here um, when he was in his, um, sitting at his couch area. And then he wanted to see quite a bit of movement of water all the way around. So I chose to put a bib liner down here, which is pretty much just a fancy way of saying another um, pond liner in here. So that way it holds the water. And then I release the water area of the pond, the pond liner um, to access this vault that's here. And that's where all of the water storage starts to go down to. So, so that way we're cupping and holding water a little longer than we normally would. Um, so up here is, um, one five to nine thousand pump and that's really pushing water down this long expanse here i also have a bib liner on there so that way we see as much of a stream bed as we could possibly get he really just didn't want to see wet rock he really wanted to see running water um, and then we did the same thing with a smaller pump and a smaller um uh, a smaller spillway down here so we have dual spillways running into one section that holds water recirculates back up to the top and and so on so this system is a really a well-designed system that just really works just, just really really works well for you know many 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 years and um, I just I think it gets better over time now in order to get this much dirt in such a narrow space, there's a pathway that goes, a concrete pathway that goes all the way around. So in order to get um, as much dirt as we needed to get here to get a three foot raise here, we ended up doing a nice big retaining wall all the way to the back, which allowed us to bring in a spillway bowl fountain. That spillway bowl, um, that water spills into a hundred gallon reservoir um, right below the second bowl. And I just think it added the perfect topper for this feature because we got water here, water spilling here, and then now we've got water at the top. It makes me feel like it's all integrated together, you know, like that they're all those three features are, are together. But 
in truth, that is a separate feature of its own, so it really supplies its own water source. Because of the, the scale of a feature this big and because it take, it's so close to the house, I had to make sure that we kind of tiered, tiered it down on the sides. And we weren't able to use too many, um, too many heavily layered um, tropicals like I would normally use. Um, I was fortunate enough to do um, a landscape for James's brother, Damon, and, and we also did a large waterfall feature in his backyard because he wanted to see that from the, fr from the, um, the back pool cage himself. And um, in that, particular instance we didn't have the water view to contend with so we were really able to layer those palm trees you know from something nice and compact all the way around the water feature and work our way up that video is coming FYI but um, uh, so it was it was um, a whole different feel this spot I needed to be able to anchor this in but not create tons of palms and layers and, and whatnot to to help give this the presence that it needed but not take up and take away from the backdrop of the water view so what I chose to do is take in and bring in a second spillway bowl. This spillway bowl kind of really does do a nice step down to the water feature. Also gives us a different sound of water. It's a much softer, lighter sound. This is a much deeper sound. And if you guys have been to resorts and places like that, you'll notice that as you're walking through their, um, their, their garden you know, resort area or pool area, they have so many different sounds of water. So they've got maybe a wall water feature that kind of trickles a little bit. And they've got a more of a fountain that really gives you more splash. And then they may have a waterfall or a pond that gives you that deep, heavy sound to it. And I just, I love having multiple different sounds of water. It just really adds charm to a space, really draws you out to enjoy it. But, so I think these do that. And then there's the visual aspect of them. You know, they're more contemporary. Um, and then you got all this rustic boulders and mix here. So I really do think that that contrast just turned out so cool. I just love it. I thought they tied in really nicely um, with this mermaid statue that we have here, which James has now turned into a bird feeder. And you guys, this was a um, non-working fountain that was in his original koi pond. And I think that it, <laughs> it just, to me, it anchored the spot so well. And the fact that it's a bird feeder now, I think is just ideal. But we placed it here because we thought it was just a beautiful, you know, just a beautiful piece of art in the garden. And it belonged back out here, just, just not as a, an operating spitter. It was just too much trouble, too much maintenance. And we were trying to eliminate some of that. Um, and then I got lucky and found this little statue um, at an antique shop down the road and uh, fashioned a some driftwood to it and we're going to put some really cool um, succulent vines on her and kind of let her taper down and and um, give a, a just a little bit of interest in the backyard as well i thought it tied in really nice with his other mermaid statue and so we decided to place them both at each end of the patio and you'll have to bryce turn around and show them that i think that turned out so nice and it was just one of those happy accidents, you know? So I don't mean to jump around on you, but while we're here, I'll kind of just show you, we did a small planter. Again, we highlighted it with light stone against the um, Tahitian granite. And we used foxtail agaves here. We used the leopard agave. We've incorporated some small boulders so that way everything ties together. You can kind of see the theme here is nothing too big, nothing too tall, because obviously you can see his couch area there. Um, that's where he spends a great deal of time and we didn't want to block anything, but it just needed a little punch of something. So this, this little bit of a, a touch of impact, I think did so nicely. And then it brings us over to this swing. So this swing we put in for James about a year ago. Um, thank you, Ricardo. We put this swing in for James about a year ago and um, it's one of the only things that remained. This swing was here uh, so he can enjoy seeing his fish in his koi pond, but I love the way that it adds impact to the edge of this, this um, now waterfall featured area. So um, this is, we, we brought the flagstone pathway and this is a great spot to enjoy. And I spent a many afternoons sitting on this swing um, as we were working through this project. So it's a great spot to be, but so you can see, I don't know if the camera will pick up the levels here, but we do have just kind of a nice natural slope. So we really did make some, just some interesting different layers in the garden with stone um, and then let the boulders kind of um, really retain all that dirt for us. And they're doing a nice job of that. You guys, these, these spillway bowls, I don't, there's probably not coming across on camera, but they are 
huge. I mean, they, <laughs> they are way bigger than they look like when they're installed. When, when we first put them in, we're like, oh my gosh, I just have no idea. It took three of us to, to manhandle them into this space. And it, was, it was a tough project, but I'm so glad they're here, but they're definitely here to stay. So those of you who are asking, what do you do during hurricane season? You do nothing, you leave them in place, they're gonna stay put. <laughs> so let's move on, um, continue on through this uh, flagstone pathway. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I chose to put foxtail palms every at every entrance way to this back garden. I, I love what they do. I love how they anchor it. And because we couldn't do two here, I wanted to do a little curved one. So this is a young tree, but it just does such a nice job of curving in. And the curve is going to get more pronounced as it gets older because we kind of planted it on a little bit of a slope. So it's going to curve straight up and kind of really give us that tropical anchor to the edge of the, um, of the waterfall. And I'll see if I can get a picture of what it looks like from inside when you're sitting in that area because it does just a nice job of anchoring it. And you'll see this foxtail palm here and the one adjacent to it um, across the walkway there. So I think it, um, think it makes you feel like there's you know two at an entrance way. So it's kind of the best I could do with uh, with walkways in my way. <laughs> so we'll continue on. So we've got some Chrysandra. These are gorgeous all summer bloomers into early fall. And then you just cut them back. You cut them almost down to the ground and then spring they flush out and they are super happy again. I love, love, love that shiny leaf to them. I just think they're gorgeous. I framed the walkway on this side with something, again, so small, so something that's only going to get two foot, which is these blue my minds. They will be a nice, small, little compact ground cover. And I love having this balance of color on both sides. I just think that it really helps create this entryway. And we're really not talking about a very big space at all. So this is kind of like just a you know, a, a, a nice little circular path in here. I feel like it's an island, it's so great. Um, so this is the doorway that leads into James's screen room um, that goes into the, the back of the house. So that's kind of all of his living space in there. And I don't know if you can see it right there um, where Bryce is pointing the camera, but it um, right straight ahead, those are his front doors. So when I was designing this landscape, I really wanted to make sure that you could see all of the hot spots, all of the big features from those front doors. So as soon as his guests walk into the house, they were seeing that impact right away. They were seeing the layers, the palms, the trees, and the not getting the coverage from the waterline. This was just the up close, immediate look of, um, of what they're seeing first, first off. So I think it did a really, really nice job of doing that. And you know, just like most houses on the river, um, everything kind of does open up to the back. So it's not just the front doors, but the, the living room area, the kitchen window, and of course his back patio section all open up to this area. And, uh, you know, really get to showcase, you know, all of, the, all of the fun features. When I'm designing, I mix highs and lows. And I know I've mentioned that to you guys before, but I always want to make sure that those key areas that are seen that I walk in multiple times and I'm placing plants and trees that are going to be, you know, the highs, you know, the expensive that's going to take into the, cut into the budget. Those are the things that are seen right off the bat. Those are the things that that everybody's going to, um, you know, get a clear view of before, you know, before they get to maybe some of the lows, which are usually my filler plants or filler trees or things like that. So um, so we definitely did make sure that happened with James's house. But so let's move on to um, the lower plant grouping here. So these are curly copper leaf. They're called Java white curlies, um, which I just, I, you guys know I use those a lot. I love how they fill out. They just really condense and make a nice thick grouping. They're kind of fast growers. So, um, you know, you do have to kind of trim them about four times a year, but I think they're worth it because when they grow together, they're just such a stunner and such a bright spot in the garden. I think they really do a nice job and I love if you could get a close-up of this, Bryce, I love this this just edge of this leaf. Just such charm to it. I mean, I just think that there, there's such a cool architectural detail in the garden. And the older they get, the more you see that, the more pronounced that is. Speaking of a fantastic detail in the garden, this tree 
is one of my favorite trees to work with. This is a gorgeous, most people will think it's a Robolini or Pygmy Date Palm, but it is not only that. It is a hybrid. So it is a Pygmy Date Palm that's been crossed with a Rupacola tree, um, which makes a fantastic tree that has a great size canopy and a little stout, little short space. So if you're looking for a tree that is gonna give you a lot of like whimsical impact, and I just love these big billowing canopy fronds, um, and then give you this much trunk, this is your tree. This, um, just, I, I, it, I think it just makes such a great backdrop to the spillway bowls. And this tree is nearly full grown. He might get two more feet from it, but overall this is, this is it. Um, it's a very old tree and I was so, so very grateful to get it. I just think it really made a nice, nice bit of impact. And it was what I chose to put at the edge of a nice big waterfall. So you know it has to be substantial in size in order to give us that anchoring, to give us that impact. And it, and it does that. I mean, just that billowy, lacy kind of movement. We have literally no wind right now, but you know when you're on the river, he gets tons and tons of breezes here. And it's just the littlest bit of wind. You're constantly seeing these move out here like little hula dancers. I just, I'm in love with this tree. It's just so lacy. So, um, so yes, yeah, so it is a pygmy rubicola mix. Um, try to say that three times fast. Um, right behind the spillway bowls, these are African iris. They bloom a white flower all summer long. They're just a little late to the game right here because they're newly planted, but they'll do a nice job, again, of giving us a little movement in the garden, almost like a grassiness um, without the mess of the grass. So um, these, these will give us a, a little bit of a loose feeling behind these spillway bowls. And then just down to the side of those and kind of through this whole rear planting bed are going to be foxtail ferns. And you know, I don't know what it is, but the last couple years, foxtail ferns have just gotten this huge resurgence of, of popularity. And I, I mean, I've always loved them. I use them so often because there's not many things that you can do sun and shade with. And, um, and then they just don't outgrow a space. They really kind of give you that real vertical impact, and, but they stay nice and compact and small. They will spread on you, but um, that's easy enough to control. I'm telling you, they're just such a cool feature. I put them near anything water related, because to me, I feel like that's, that, that's where they belong. So, um, so foxtail ferns there. This little interesting vine here, we've only got five of them, but this is a variegated creeping fig. And um, this little guy is really, really gonna take, take on the boulders. So anytime I have any boulders that I kinda wanna give it a natural state or a natural look, I'll take creeping fig, whether it's the green, this area I was able to do the variegated because of the salt. So we were able to take those and they're just gonna fill in all the cracks um, that you see here. They're just gonna run right down that and they kind of attach themselves to the boulders and really just kind of give it that natural, natural look. Now, I only chose to put five of them in the, in the back wall um, because they really can take over if you don't keep on them. But, you know, if you got that perfect spot for them, they're worth it. So what this guy will do is he will grab a hold here and then he'll start working his way into all these crevices here. So that way this wall is kind of, you know, just jazzed up in key areas along the sides. So, you know, you kind of have, I, I love that look of polish and rustic. So it's going to do that for, for the wall. Um, the topper plants that I chose for the back, again, we didn't want anything too tall. So um, I chose to put in king sagos. So these are slow growing, small little palm trees. And, you know, I know king sagos can get a bad rap, you guys. And I know I've, I've mentioned this in before videos. I have nine of them in my yard. I am in love with them. I think you get a lot of impact um, for um, a, a very small plant. Um, so. I treat them with a the drench about three times to four times a year. Just depends on, you know, during the summer rainy season. If we have a heavy rain season, I treat them um, that much. But you can get away with treating them twice a year, and, you know, they're definitely worth it. Um, I'll put the drench details in the, in the description below. But I, I'm in love with the King Sagos. I use them everywhere. Down below, I didn't want anything to get too tall, too high, and too much maintenance along the rear side of this wall. Now this wall is gonna to produce tons and tons of heat from that summer sun, so I had to put something down here that could handle that blast of heat, and that's why we've got these dwarf mammy crotons. These guys are gonna maintain a two foot height and be really, really easy to keep up with. Um, and they also kind of really 
almost give you a dramatic dark tone to these two light spaces. So these two light areas of between the wall and the walkway. So I like the idea that we've kind of got a dark outline here, you know, but yeah. And then, um, you know, I think we're going to touch on just these last, this last two areas here, Bryce. So back here, this is your typical pygmy date palm. This one's nearly full grown. We chose to put two back here to kind of help disguise the dock. Um, those were the only areas that James was okay with really kind of giving, a, giving blockage to were the two docks in the back. So um, you notice that's where we kind of concentrated our highlight trees. Um, so we've got the pygmy date palms here and you guys, if you saw my front yard video, you saw this guy in my front yard. I am in love with this tree. Um, this poor guy has a couple of dead fronds on him um, since he was just newly planted. But if you can get a close up of this frond, the dynamic size of this frond for such a small tree, I bet you can imagine what that's going to look like when it gets bigger. Yes, I will post a picture of what it looks like when it's, um, when it's a little bit larger. They do take some time to grow. But oh my goodness, that silver tone to the to the leaf, I just is, is so so dramatic. I love how how vibrant and, and aggressive that tree is in that spot. This tree, because it does widen out like this, is going to cover more of the water line than um, than you know I would have liked. But it is it's positioned from inside the house. It's positioned directly on the dock, so that way this backdrop is going to um, pretty much just cover the dock. But I think it's gonna be so worth it because it's gonna be one of those statements that you see as soon as you enter the house, which I just can't wait till it gets there because it is such a cool tree. This tree is called Copernicia falensis, and it's, um, it's the silver tone. Some of them have more green, some of them have more silver. So when you pick, a, pick one of these guys when they're young, definitely pick one that has some silver shine to it. Those trees are just staples in a garden, and this definitely is. This was a high, so this I splurged a little bit on, but when you see it when it's, when it's grown, you'll understand why. It's really one of those worth it. Um, we just dappled in some um, Mammy Crotons because we have them across the way. So I wanted to tie them in in this bed as well. Now um, I, we've got two foxtail palms entering the dock area. So again, you know, I am, I don't know if it's a Roman thing, I don't know, but I love columns when you come into the front. So um, I have always put trees at an entryway point. So we've got the columns of the foxtail palms here, the foxtail palms entering the water feature area, and of course the foxtail palm over there. I just love the impact that that makes. I feel like, I, I just think that it's so romantic when people walk underneath the canopy of fronds to, um, to get from one destination to the other, you know, but, but that's just me. Um, so over here, um, we did this planting uh, a little over a year ago, um, but we did touch in another pygmy date palm while we were here this time. And um, you see some beautiful fire bushes to the back that um, do a nice job of just kind of holding in that bank and giving some color and bringing in the birds. Um, we've got some false agaves here. And then that kind of wraps us right back around to um, to entering the the backyard. So you guys, I know I didn't do a, a super in-depth tour. If there's anything that I did miss, um, please you know stick it in the comments down below with the timestamp, and I'd be happy to get with um, get with you guys on it and answer you in the comments. Be a little patient with me because. This is my full-time job, but this has been such a great hobby with you guys sharing with you what, you know, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, these videos have been a lot of fun, uh, a little bit of challenging, it's, <laughs> but a lot of fun. So um, stick in the comments down below. And definitely, if you have any questions that you think that um, you would love to see more, more detailed explanation on, then stick that also in the comments down below. And I will address that when, um, when I get... And I will address that um, in a video by itself, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> Bryce is trying to capture the birds going to that bird feeder, that mermaid bird feeder. So we're sitting out there talking and just having the cutest conversation. All of a sudden, um, Blue Jays popped into that mermaid bird feeder and, um, <laughs> and scored some peanuts in there. So, so now he's trying to capture it again. So, um, but anyway, 
Uh, yeah, so I would be happy to answer any of those questions. I, I try to answer them in the comments, but sometimes they can get a bit lengthy, so I was hoping to be able to maybe, you know, just give you a little bit more, um, more info um, by video. So if, um, if it calls for that, then please uh, shoot it out, and I'll be happy to uh, see you in the next video and share that question and answer with you there. So, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration and this is, might be something that you want to tackle in your own backyard space. If you have any questions about what we purchased or what, you know, where I got certain things, then again, stick it in the comments down below. I'd be happy to share it with you DIYers and, um, you know, and wish you the best of luck with it. So, uh, Bryce, was there anything that you wanted to add? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. I'll steal. A little microphone, let me get my hair right real quick. Sorry, I've been sweating, it's pretty hot out here. Um, first things first, let her know how awesome she is in the comments. You know, she does all this every single day, and she, she's, she's really a master at work. Um, second thing, he loves his mom. I do love my mom, mama's boy. Um, second thing, for sure, if you have any video ideas or you guys want us to make anything or like, uh, just be creative, you know what I mean? Put it in the comments. We're, we're looking for ideas to make. Uh, we want to we want to put out information and videos that you want to watch. So help us out. Uh, and third thing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know how my videography is and if I could do any better. And have a good day. Bye.